Howdy ho, neighborino. We are here today with a new ancient to hatch, for me at least, because from the most recent ancient event, I wasn't really around too often to be able to play, but we did manage to get our hands on Oira after, you know, basically spending all of our currency during that stream. And this is Oira's egg, which honestly I don't think really looks like Oira, but hey, we'll take it. So Oira is of course an ancient dragon, ancient water and energy. And out of all of the dragons available in the most recent ancient event, either Pokra or Oira, I would say, were by far the most useful. You know, Ventu's the exception Divine Ancient, but in terms of dragons that aren't super exception stats, if you were going to pick a dragon, you'd want the one with either water or earth and fire, right? But... Spunky Oira, ancient water dragon of energy, rules over storms that whip the sea into a frenzy. It keeps the great dragon's throat whirlpool spinning and powers the few devices left in its age. Isn't that just neat? Ain't that just neat? He keeps all the power machines and technology running, aren't you just a chad? But... Yeah, a lot of people have been asking recently, you know, I got this ancient from the event, what should I actually add to my team? You've still got to be careful with Ancients because they don't provide the same buff that Divine does. Which is the reason why it's still recommended that you should use two Divines and one Ancient. Obviously if you've got an Ancient Divine that's different because it's both. But like if you were going to pick either Pokra or Oira, realistically I'd say you need to just pick one of them. And then pick two Divines around that. But, you know, depends on what you get, depends on what your team's like, and I guess at the end of the day, the day it also depends on which dragon you actually like looking at. Because, you know, you're going to be stuck with that dragon for a very long time if you don't have tons of dragons at the same level. But Oira is definitely a very cool looking ancient, I would say. Like, look at this adult form. Very cool, very snazzy. And uh, we did miss Oira the first time it was available, so it's good that they're finally re-releasing ancients and other dragons so that we can actually have them in our games because otherwise it just felt like we were just getting more and more ancients and if you miss them well then tough luck right but we do also have the Arya dragon sitting in our hatchery so that's going to be another two days until we can see her in the flesh breed more Aryas that's what I like to hear we do also have the newest weekly event schedule coming up and this is in the in my DML server, but one thing to note is that originally we were going to have a Dragon's Delight event next week, but that's been cancelled and we're actually going to have a solo event with the Femfang Dragon in it instead. So I guess no Primal event next week, but I would expect it soon, very soon. But you know, in terms of Primals coming out, I still don't think they're going to really make any difference to the game in terms of how it actually plays out. I would love to be proven wrong. Like maybe it just gets super buffed by Divine or something, but I just can't see it being a super, super strong element in any case, especially not in Dungeon. It just seems like it's gonna be really not useful. But I kinda wanna take uh, Oira Dragon in for a quick battle now that we've got them. So where is he? Joe, is that actually his name, a Joe Mama? My goodness, I could not hold back. I'm very sorry. Joe Mama. That's all I can imagine right now. Fantastic. But either way, we'll take our Oira and Pokra Dragons in for this. So, once again, if you had a team like this, like two Ancients and a Divine, wouldn't really recommend it. Like, if we were just to, you know, randomly pick this team out and say, what's wrong with it? One is the fact that it only has one Divine, of course. Second being the fact that Oira has too many roles, really. I mean, we've got two Ancients, so I guess Oira could just be the, the uh, Leecher. But you should never really rely on a single dragon to have to do three roles in a team. Like, my Nezha does that. And Nezha really struggles during Plant Dungeon Weeks, which is the reason why I tell you, don't do it. Don't, don't do what I did. I was kind of stuck at the time with the dragons I had available, like I don't really have a water divine or an earth divine to use, so I had to use Nezha. 
but like a team like this, the problem, main one, is purely the fact that, you know, there are, there's only one divine in it. So it would be an okay team, but it would also have a lot of potential to instantly die during a dungeon run. So if we could replace, say, the Oira with a different divine that has like water and fire for example possibly so then you can switch between the the turns that the popra uses its fire and earth you know that could work out but you know there's lots of things to take into account in terms of having a good team but since we will be having the primal event i'm guessing is i'm almost certain that should be the next major event that we have i say major but they're not calling it a major event despite the fact it's three weeks long but that's the next event we should be expecting. So in in reality, I don't think we should actually be expecting a divine or ancient event in terms of how we've had them before for a very long time. So if anything, that is a bad thing for a lot of players, but also a good thing because it means that you've got plenty of time to get your teams ready for when we do actually get the events out. So again, primary thing you want to do, especially if you did get an Ancient from this event, is just focus on making your team better so that you can absolutely dab on the dungeon. I haven't even touched dungeon in weeks, I feel good about it, but you know, at the same time, if you are a new player, dungeon is incredibly useful and it's required if you want to get all of those super snazzy, super overpowered dragons. So whether you want to or not, you're gonna have to do it at some point. That is unless you just spend lots of money instead, but then you're not really playing the game at that point, you're just playing a slot machine at that point. So that's the reason why people that just spend and don't actually play any of the events, like you're open to doing so, as in day one you just buy everything, but it's just at that point it's like you're not really actually, if we're being honest, you're not actually playing the game at that point, you're literally just buying the game at that point. And you have every right to do so, but, uh, you know, I ki it kind of loses the point for me. It's like, if I could just buy every single Dragon of the Week, why would I do that? When that would just take away the gameplay, you know? So, the unfortunate thing is mainly the fact that the dungeon is incredibly unfun gameplay. <laughs> so it's one of the only things that I could sort of understand someone actually just outright buying their way through it, just because... You know, it is literally boring. <laughs> it's incredibly boring. I hate it. I hate having to do it, but, you know, it's one of those things where if you do want to be free to play successful and you want to get the rewards, you have to do it. You want to get that super snazzy ancient divine? You gotta do it. You want to get the emojis? I got him literally from my last chest of the event when I got Fundiju, so trust me, I know, it can be a struggle. It could definitely be a struggle. Pick your poison. Pick the events that you actually want to compete in and you actually want to waste your time in. Don't play all the events if you don't want to do them. It's that simple. That's the only way I can really hang on with this game because if I tried to play every single event and every single dungeon week, I'd definitely get burnt out. Just a little bit of food for thought today. Maybe you just love the dungeon, in which case I envy you. I truly do. The other thing to note is that, of course, we do have Whale Mart, and we've got some relics in here, dragon tickets, which I always recommend you pick up. But the other thing in here that I've also seen a lot of questions about in the last few months, I would say, uh, we did go through this before, but premium sigil chests in particular, because, you know, everyone's desperate for sigils. And this one in here in the shop, you get five premium sigil chests for 399 gems. If you're ever going to buy premium sigil chests, because you know some Whale Mart weeks they'll offer a singular chest for 99 gems. If you're ever going to buy premium sigil chests, you should save up and buy the times five. Because, I mean, it's pretty simple math. For five of them, it costs essentially 400 gems. Whereas normally, they're going to charge you 99 gems, sorry, 100 gems basically per chest. So if you save up and purchase this bigger bundle, you're essentially saving a hundred gems every single time you purchase this instead of them singularly, which it's not a huge difference if we really think about, it, especially with how random the drops are. But if you actually do care to, you know, be optimal and not waste your valuable gemmies, 
save up and buy them as a bundle pack. But the problem with the actual times five bundles is that, you know, 400 gems is a lot to have to save up for if you're either free to play or you spend very little. And is it actually worth purchasing these if you want a divine or an ancient? I would say depends. Like in my situation, since I've already got divines and ancients, and I'm pretty sure I can get at least a couple of divines or ancients per event, it would be worth it for me. But if you're someone that doesn't have any divines or ancients, I would be a little bit more skeptical and a little bit more hesitant to purchase. So uh, for anyone that was curious about that deal in the Whale Mart, that's my take on it. It's still a decent bundle for because it's the only real way to guaranteed get at least a decent amount of sigil stuff. But the reality is if you just don't spend a lot of money, you're not really going to have tons and tons and tons of sigils anyway. So uh, that's just the way that it is. You've got to save up and do the best that you can with the limited jimmies that you actually do have. But, you know, the Ancient event is going to be coming to an end very soon. I hope that you managed to get everything that you wanted out of it. We did also have Cake Craze this week, but as you can imagine, I have ignored that because Cake Craze makes me want to gouge out my eyeballs. So uh, instead, I've been chilling out, playing Elden Ring and not caring about DML. It's been very relaxing. But anyway, with our new Ancient in tow and waiting for our Legendary to hatch, I will say my goodbyesies and wish you the best. I hope you have a good weekend and good week if you're not watching it on the weekend. And until next time, I do hope I can see you then.